All right. Welcome to your introduction to statistics lessons one lesson 1.3. Um, today we're going to learn how to use histograms to display quantitative data. You will want your calculator with you so that you can practice entering the data into the calculator and creating a histogram. Exploratory data analysis is sometimes called EDA, and it's a technique particularly useful for detecting patterns and extreme values or patterns and departures from those patterns. Um, it makes use of histograms and other graphics. And we're going to, the last three lessons, this lesson and the next two for this chapter are going to be about creating pictures of data. A graphical display should show the data induce the viewer to think about the substance of the graph and avoid distorting the message. Okay, for any graph, you need to provide a title, label the axes, identify the units of measure, and pre present the information clearly. I will say that providing a title and labeling the axes are the two things that um, students forget to do. It's not just about getting the graph on the paper, it's about being able to communicate the information in the graph. So make sure you do these things and you'll do great. Okay, so what is a histogram? It's a visual display of quantitative data organized into a frequency table. Um, the bars represent each class, the height of the bar represents the class frequency, how many people fall into that um, particular range of values, or you can um, convert to percentages and so and use relative frequencies. Um, the width of each bar represents class width, and we're going to ha use um, equal class widths for all our bars in this class. All right, so to construct a histogram, um, you want to grab your calculator and turn it on. You want to create a document, okay? So you need to open a document, and you need to insert a list and spreadsheet page in the document. So you're going to go to Doc Insert Data and Statistics, and that'll take care of it for you. You want to click on the horizontal axis, and it add the variable associated with the list to this axis. So at the point that you do this, you've got your list and spreadsheet that you've entered the data into, and then you're going to go to the um, second page, the one you just inserted, the data and statistics page. And remember, you always have to give your list a variable name, even if it's just X, that's fine. That's because now when you go to look at the, the graphical display, you need to tell the calculator that you want it to look at that list and put all of the um, values in that list into a graph, okay? So on the horizontal axis, you want to add the variable associated to the list uh, of the list with the axis, and then you're going to go, it's going to put it in a dot plot first, which is a great other form of graphical display, but then you're going to want to go to menu, plot type, and choose histogram. All right, so the following are the weights of 15 woodchucks and pounds, and so using your cast or just regular Inspire, make a histogram of the woodchuck weights. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is open a document. I went ahead and titled it just to make sure um, I can save it. And I labeled my um, list as pounds. Remember, this is a list and spreadsheet page. So I just came up here and typed pounds. And then I just entered my data below. Okay, remember, we don't use the gray cell. You label up here at A, and then you start entering the data. All right, once you have that, that's when you want to add the data and statistics page. Now, it's going to be tempting to add the graph page, but that's for graphing things like parabolas and, and that sort of thing. We want to see the data. Um, so we add data and statistics, and this is just like a random splattering of the, the, data, the observations that you have. It's not organized. So we want to organize it. And we want to organize it according to the pounds of the little woodchucks. So 
I um, come over here and add the variable pounds. And here's my nice little dot plot. But I want a histogram, so I'm going to go to menu, plot type, and change to histogram. And then boom, it gives me a histogram. Now, I don't really like the way this histogram looks. It looks like they've divided it up into too many categories. So I'm going to change the bin width. And so to do that, I'm going to go to the window and zoom data if needed. Okay. Uh, once you've changed the bin, the bin width to 1, right now it has the bin width at, at 0.5. Let's see if we make the bin width a little larger so we can put more weights in each bin, if that gives us a better picture of what's going on. And again, Zoom Data um, will rescale it to fit what you've done with the data. And this is a really nice looking histogram. Okay. And... Um, Looking at this um, in a minute, you're going to be able to describe this. It's actually skewed to the right. We've got a nice little peak here around five. Um, let's look at the names of these shapes. There's symmetrical or just symmetric, uniform or rectangular, which is actually a type of symmetric um, shape. There's skewed left, there's skewed right, and then there's bimodal. All right, a symmetric or symmetrical histogram is going to look um, like you could just fold it over its midline and the bars would match up, okay? So like if we divide it right down the middle here, it looks roughly the same on the left and roughly on the right, okay? Rarely in real life does it come out to be this perfectly symmetric, but if it looks roughly like that, then it's symmetric. Um, a uniform or rectangular histogram, that's where every class occurs at the same frequency. Okay. All right. The direction of this skew is the direction of the tail. Okay. Um, so if you look here, the tail trails to the left. So this is skewed left. And over here, the tail trails to the right, so this is skewed right. This is counterintuitive for a lot of people, so you really want to make sure you know it. Um, a bimodal histogram is one with two clear peaks. So this one clearly has a peak here. This one has a peak here. Um, the mode is going to be the most frequent um, the most frequent occurring value in a data set. And so <clears throat> they don't have to be the same. Um, you can have a second mode if it's just a peak at a different part of the values. All right, guys, that's it for today. Next time, we're going to learn various ways to display categorical data. So um, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. So please um, either email me or come by my classroom. I'm always happy to hear from you. Um, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in class.